I'm John Puccinelli from the Department of Biomedical Engineering, and I kind of have two stories to tell you today, um, and I'll introduce with a little bit of background as to what courses that we're using lab archives electronic notebooks in. And we do, uh, in our program, uh, design throughout the curriculum. So there are actually six semesters of sequential design-based courses. Uh, five of those six are client-based courses, so they're almost like working in a lab environment. Uh, one of those courses, the second one here, is actually more of a um, recipe book style lab where the students are given protocols to follow and uh, they'll go through the, sort of the, the, the motions, take notes, and answer some questions about the lab. And the story starts basically story one in how we implemented lab archives in our uh, design-based courses, the client-based courses. And in doing that, realized how applicable it was and how useful it would be to also use it in our more structured course as well. So just out of curiosity, how many of you run like a structured lab-based course? Okay, just a couple. How about design open-ended kind of courses? Okay, one of you, so a couple. All right, so I think this is a really useful tool, um, not only for uh, lab-based courses. Um, I also use it for my daily life in sort of keeping notes. Uh, for various seminars that I go to, um, yeah, et cetera. So I'll show you the tool um, and walk you through what we wanted, uh, what we tried, and what happened. So basically the story starts in that story one, we wanted a design notebook. And that's very similar to your traditional lab-based notebook. Many of you are taking notes right now and on a pad of paper. Maybe some of you are typing notes. But in, in design and in research, you really want a permanent record. You want something that's going to hold up for patent protection um, and publication. And so we needed something that would um, you know, legally do that for us. Okay. <coughs> and we also, in our course, from a pedagogical standpoint, wanted to be able to show um, how these students in a team-based environment are all individually compute, uh, contributing to that different project. <coughs> Um, also, uh, in engineering, um, our students are going to go off into industry and they're going to be having to keep records, very detailed records, and so we want to really instill in them sort of that practice of basically writing down everything that they're doing, again, going back to sort of point one um, in protecting their intellectual property and sort of validating anything that they publish. And the story two kind of evolved out of this and how we created sort of this living um, lab manual that, that's really easily updated. Um, and ultimately, we wanted for that is something that the students could use um, as a reference tool uh, down the road. So I know a lot of LMS systems um, basically close the students out after the course ends. And we wanted something that the students could basically have with them for life. And I'll show you how they could do that. So two different ways, actually, with Lab Archive. <coughs> so what we tried, um, going back originally, we, you know, for the last 15 years since the department started before we went to Lab Archives, we basically used paper and pen. So we had the students buy uh, paper and notebooks for a while. Then we had a generous donation in which we actually supplied them with more official uh, BME uh, design notebooks. Um, but ultimately, that's what I had on my desk uh, twice a semester to grade uh, for my two teams or four teams of students to plan upon the semester. And so the, the sheer physical space and weight that those notebooks uh, I, had to, I had to deal with every semester was sort of unbearable. So most of the time, I would take them home and, and grade them at night. Um, also, in, in that sense, there's only one copy of the notebook. So when I took their notebook to grade, if I didn't grade it quick enough, they're getting behind in their course. They can't keep up with it, um, et cetera. And ultimately, the one copy, also, um, the students can't keep it themselves. They usually give it back to the client, like in a research lab. They would give it back to the PI, for example. And so then that, that notebook is gone. So if another team came along to work on that project, they may not have access to those uh, notebooks. Okay. Also, um, depending upon the student's penmanship, formatting, spelling, I mean, it was sometimes they're impossible to read. Uh, so we really just needed something um, that could maybe help with these disadvantages, right? But of course, with the good things about paper is it's always just in their backpack, unless we're grading them, okay? And it's really easy for them to just make sketches, do math calculations, draw chemical equations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the other really cool thing about paper is that you just flip the page and it's the chronological order. Okay, so those are things we really liked about the paper. So we look for different things um, that, you know, different alternatives to paper that would solve and, and bring some of the same advantages the paper had um, 
but also add some new added technology. Okay, so we look for lab notebooks that could do this, electronic notebooks. Um, and there are hundreds, hundreds of different, different options out there. And then some <coughs> that you're familiar with, um, like Evernote or OneNote, of course, Drive and Box offer similar functionality. And then there are a lot of highly specialized research notebooks out there. Uh, Campus piloted some here, um, and we reviewed a couple others. But ultimately, we wanted this electronic notebook uh, to, one, maintain the positive features of paper, so access, intellectual property protection, so the students would always write in pen, and Wharf <laughs> always um, you know, would appreciate the, the paper notebooks for that reason. Right? We want added functionality, and then we wanted to be able to manage our students, so similar to maybe another LMS system where you had the hierarchy of an instructor, teaching assistants or student assistants that could um, help manage your class, and then, of course, the students in your team. And those teaching assistants could be, we have sometimes 16 design instructors teaching at one time. Each team has their own client, so we want access for the, for the clients and the, student and, and the instructors as well. Okay. And then we also want the students, of course, to be able to easy ma easily manage content within a notebook and be able to work with many different file types. As we realize with the paper, our students are using you know, SOLIDWORKS, AutoCAD, other tools. They're writing software code. And oftentimes, they're just printing off paper copies of, of that work and taping it in their notebook. And there's really no way to edit that again or to have anyone else access the original files. So we really want a, a place to just dump all these files in there. Um, but again, still maintain the sort of date and time stamp that you get in a paper notebook um, by writing the date in. Okay. The other thing is we want to have this notebook to be accessible uh, <coughs> to a wide range of audiences, whether it's a, um, a special needs of some sort or even um, across um, different people. So what we end up trying is um, lab archives, the first one that we jumped into. So I should go maybe go back. And we did look at some of these other different options. And most of them didn't offer sort of that classroom functionality. Okay? In fact, many, many of their highly specialized research notebooks didn't have any kind of classroom <coughs> functionality. Okay? And we looked at things like Box or Drive. Um, but it, it, it often is hard to sort of navigate and, and see you know, what the students are really doing in kind of a chronological feel, maybe what the students were doing um, individually if they're sharing a single drive folder. It just it, it poses some challenges that way for grading purposes and as well even for um, some intellectual property reasons. Okay. So we ended up trying this software called Lab Archives before campus um, got on board with them. And what it, it really did is it, they sold us based upon their sort of classroom hierarchy structure. Okay, so what they have is you have a classroom edition of this notebook. And we'll get into the, the notebook in a second. But this is sort of the, what, what the instructor can look at. And you can create whatever sort of file structure or files you want within your notebook on the, on the side. You can then create a course over here and select the notebook you want to use for that course. You can have sections in your course. You can have the students sign themselves up in the course uh, by just sending them a URL. Or you can add them manually by pasting in email addresses. Okay? Then you have teaching assistants. And then they even have an assignment feature built into this. And I'll tell you some of the, the caveats with that down the road. Okay? But what was really nice is over here we could have, this is one section. So we have showing just one section. And we do sections by teams. Okay? So there are only four students in a section. And we have like 50 some sections. But what we see here is just this one section, each of the different students in that section, okay, how many different activities they've had in their notebook, and then quick links to different things, such as uh, sort of a more <coughs> chronological feel of what they most recently did to what the oldest was, and then a direct link to their notebook. And then I'll, I'll show you this um, in real time as well. From the student's standpoint, what they see is sort of their folder structure. So again, it kind of has that drive feel or your Windows Explorer feel of folders and files within, within the system. Then over here is what you're looking at when you click on any one of the files. And you have different options to add different kind of content to that particular file. You can add a rich text entry. You can add an office document. You can add uh, widgets that do all kinds of different things like calculate molarity or create chemical inventories, whatever you might want to do in a chemistry type of lab. You can insert references directly from PubMed um, or any kind of attachment that you might want to have, any kind of file that you might want to add to your notebook. So 
for most of our stuff that we're doing with our students, we're having them do rich text entries um, to just keep track, just like they were typing notes in a Word document, for example. And we have them follow a very structured um, um, layout. So oh, there you go. So I've made that bigger so you can see it. You can click on different things to add different documents. Okay. What was really nice is that we got to see who the author was of this content. So if they did share notebooks and someone else authored within theirs, we know who the author is right at the top. When it was created, or when it was last updated anyway. If they did make multiple updates, you can click on revisions. And you can actually go back and just kind of, again, like a, a Google Doc, you can go back and see what people had done in the past and even revert to past revisions if you want to. And then we had our students follow a very set structure. So we created a template for them that they can quickly create a new entry from our template and use to fill in the, the stuff that we're asking for. OK, so um, key features. One, it's really inexpensive for the students to use. There's no cost for us as instructors or a department. So it's a student paid system. Uh, campus is under negotiations for different price points right now. It's $750 per student per semester. And that's any number of courses, I believe. Um, and then what's really nice for us is that I showed that for protecting intellectual property and patenting the publications, you had that time stamping and revisions. They're actually recognized by the uh, different organizations uh, for protecting intellectual property. Okay? Um, and of course, it works with standard shortcuts, formatting features, so very much like a Microsoft Word document, even within the rich text entry. Um, but you can also work with Word documents if you want. Google Docs you can actually use within it. PubMed <coughs> integration, et cetera, et cetera. Also, we'll maybe a demo you can play with if you have your phone. You can use smartphone apps with it. Um, so we'll show you an example. Last night, I took a picture from my phone, uploaded it directly into the notebook that you'll use um, in a matter of seconds. And the really neat thing about this is you actually can get one single document of the entire notebook when you're done. And so for us, for our students to have this sort of recipe book lab um, that we created for them, they can PDF it, have it forever. They can always go back in the lab archives as well. It also gives us a really easy way for us to scroll through the entire document. And so um, that kind of looks really like um, a PDF with the file structure over here as clickable links. And then for our team, it makes a table, you know, it makes a table of contents that looks really nice. You can click on a single um, entry, sort of see what the student has done, scroll through it quickly. So ultimately, we actually use this sometimes to give the students feedback or grading, but you can also grade them within the actual um, course as well. For our wet labs, we actually sometimes PDF uh, the documents for them. Oops, this one. So, and print them. And what it comes off is a really nice document. So this is our more structured lab. We give them an introduction to the lab, our objectives, different things within the lab. They can go over here and look at pre-lab questions they have to answer, uh, the lab protocol. So they kind of can go through this and you know, they can bring a printed copy with them if they want to, if they're worried about using their laptop and working with reagents or something like that. So a PDF is a really nice tool that maybe you can't quite get when you have a lot of different documents or different pages and other sources um, like Drive. Okay, and then you can also make your own widgets. So they have this widget tool you can design if you like to program or if you know someone that does, maybe do it, we'll do it for you, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you can uh, create these different widgets to do different things that you want to do. So they have a whole slew of widgets. You can play around with those today, see what they all have already, but you can customize them. And then sort of to wrap up the sort of um, lab-based story that um, I started telling at the beginning, we have this course that's the, this recipe book and I showed you lab 10 there, the tissue engineering lab. What's really nice about that is that we have all of our student assistants. We have three instructors in the course. We have teaching assistants in the course. And we have all of them have access to that notebook. They all can go in. They can edit the notebook. They can make changes. We actually call on our students to come back and give us feedback for this course. So that when they go off, go off in the industry, they learn a new tool that they find useful for their careers. They can come back, help us write a lab for it within lab archives. And then we have it there for the future to use. We can always go back and see revisions that were made 
And so it's just really this living document that we've created. And I'll show you how we actually implement that living document with our students in just a second as well. <coughs> so we did um, actually publish a paper in the American Society for Engineering Education. You'll give them these slides, maybe? Yes. They yeah. So you can click on this link, and you can um, go read the paper if you want to see more results. But we basically surveyed our students after the first year of using this in our class, because it was great. We have design throughout the curriculum. And oh, there we go. So we have students that have been in design since freshman year all the way through senior year. So we had a group of students that have used paper notebooks in our design class, and this group of students that this over this year has now used the electronic notebook. And we asked them to compare the two. Rate these different points on um, you know, how well paper notebooks allowed you to do these things or how well electronic notebooks allowed you to do these things. And you can kind of clearly see that there are a whole bunch of categories that are listed over here where the paper electronic notebook was much better as far as logistically keeping their notebook than the paper notebooks were. And then a bunch that fell along the middle where they're both about the same. The one area in which the electronic notebook, I guess, failed in comparison to the paper was the ability for the students to make sketches. Um, and I have another plot like this related to our ABIT outcomes our, our for assessment, but ability to do mathematics. So again, this goes back to being able to hand write quickly, draw sketches in, in a paper notebook it is much easier. And um, ultimately, what you want to do is you want to be able to um, create something that, that ha gives them the tools that they can use to be able to do all the stuff they need to do. So when I talk about the sketches and the math, we, we've, we've actually used our own um, teaching practices to show them the tools that Lab Archives has available so that they can make those different um, sort of, I guess, negatives into positives. Okay? So there's an app that I mentioned where you can just quickly snap a picture and upload the file into the notebook. That app has been used basically um, now in replacement of doing those hand drawings on paper or on a whiteboard. They can now get that content quickly into their notebooks. Okay? So what's really nice about um, the notebook is that we don't have sort of the, the, the PDF or the Word document that's sort of locked down. If you upload a PDF to the, the learning management system like Moodle or Learn, it's, it's that PDF that's there. It's not really easy to go back and update it until you go to your computer, upload it, update it. You can do you know, that kind of editing in Google Docs, um, but this adds some extra functionality for you. Okay. It's really easy for them to use and follow. And like I said, the students and our instructors can all contribute to the notebook. One caution I'd have is avoid using too many tools. So when the first semester we used Lab Archives in our recipe book course, we also used Moodle and Piazza. We have our, our own sort of design course website that they kind of go to for some things as well. So we basically had four different websites that they kind of had to keep track of. Um, and it, 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 they complained about that. So we basically kind of tried to eliminate everything except for two. And so now we're down to Lab Archives and, and Moodle uh, for most things. OK, so um, what we did next time, OK, so nothing, um, I, honestly. We kind of been using the same system for the last six semesters. It's worked really well for us. The students have had little complaint, except for the sketches and math, okay? And um, the too many tools, which I think we've resolved um, with these different available options for them. The original first year, 80% of the students that basically wanted to continue using it um, and never go back to paper. Uh, we had some that you know, thought paper was better, and what they cited again were, was the, just the ability to do sketches and if you, you ask the students who wanted to do that, they, they tended to say that it was, it, the reasoning that they wrote was that they had really nice penmanship and really just liked writing. Um, all of our faculty loved it because they didn't have to carry around backpacks with notebooks anymore. Um, so that was, that was really nice. And we actually noticed um, that the students had higher quality content entry okay, versus the paper and higher quantity. So that was a, an added benefit. And this was the, the bullet I was looking for a little bit ago, is that you can overcome different challenges you have by teaching them the tools. So we, every semester, we start off the course with a mini lecture, only about 10 minutes, on really neat features of Lab Archives that you can use over the semester. Okay? And it's also really important to have your instructors, if you have teaching assistants, educated on how to use it, because they're often the ones that the students will go to if they have problems. And so we found that having 
a really strong set of students and teaching assistants know the software uh, works really well too. Okay. One of the other, some of the negatives that we had is that the notebook does for the students kind of lack the chronological feel. Um, so in paper you can kind of just page through it and it's just everything in order. Um, students still actually use other tools despite having lab archives themselves and it really depends on the student group. I know a lot of student groups have a, a Facebook page. They still have sometimes a, a Google Drive or a Google, Google Docs folder that they sometimes will upload things uh, to. And a new thing that I recently learned about is a thing called Slack, which I don't really know a whole lot about. Um, but it's really, I guess, a tool for doing group collaborations. And so it'll be interesting to look at how we can maybe leverage other tools and integrate them better with Lab Archives. Now, Lab Archives has added the widget for Google Docs features, which has been used a lot by our students as well. Okay. And then uh, last note here is we also tried the assignment feature, and I'll, I'll leave that off camera. <laughs> uh, we had some challenges with the assignment feature in Lab Archives logistically in the way it's run. I think things like Learn at UW and Moodle do that a lot better. Um, as far as self-grading, um, uploading, maybe just uh, final documents of things. Uh, but for a living document, this works out really well where students are having to take notes in real time. 